Okay, so uh, today's uh, presentation is on the uh, four levels of validation. This is uh, chapter four in the uh, Munzner book. And the main idea with this uh, topic is that you need to perform verification and validation. It's probably important to introduce those two terms for those of you who aren't computer scientists. Verification means, are we building the product right? That is, are we building it according to specification? So did we do what we were asked to do as far as a specification goes? Validation says, are we building the right product? This is you know, what the customer wants and needs. So you, know, you could verify that you build a product uh, according to the uh, specification or the requirements, but it might not be what the uh, customer really needs. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, concept in a bit more detail. So as always, Munzer starts hers out with the uh, big picture. And the uh, main idea that you can see here is you can choose your validation technique based on which level you want to validate it. So if you're looking at the algorithm level, you want to measure system time uh, to accomplish the algorithm, uh, perhaps memory or analyze computational complexity in terms of big O notation. Uh, for the visual encoding, you might want to do some uh, you know, uh, human studies uh, in a lab environment. UH Manoa has a uh, lab that does uh, precisely that to see how well people are performing the uh, task with the uh, computer system. At the uh, data or task abstraction level, you want to observe the target users after deployment. You know, that could be a field study or an ethnography to you know, see how well they're actually uh, performing the job. And then for the domain situation, <clears throat> um, a tool you could use is to measure adoption. Are people actually picking this up and using it? So here are the four levels of design without validation tasks associated with them. The book focuses on the middle two, that is the visual encoding and the interaction idiom and the data and task abstraction. Uh, but algorithms and domain analysis are so important. In fact, computer science is often referred to as the study of algorithms. It's also important to note that these levels are nested. So the type of visual encoding selected will feed into the algorithms, for example. Needless to say, choosing the wrong block upstream, you know, something that doesn't suit the uh, domain situation, is going to mess up everything in the interior. The other item to note is that the design is an iterative process. You rarely progress in a linear fashion going from one to another. Often you go back to a previous phase and modify it based upon the uh, results of the current phase. So the domain situation encompasses a group of target users, their domain of interest, their questions, and their data. For example, a computational biologist working in comparative genomics. They use the genetic sequence data to ask questions about genetic sources of adaptability in the species. So the uh, target users are the computational biologists. Their domain of interest is the comparative genomics. Their uh, questions are about genetic sources of adaptability, and um, their um, data is genetic sequence data. And at the domain level, you're interested in performing requirements analysis, identifying situation blocks, or telling user stories. Design at the next level requires abstracting the specific domain questions and data from the domain specific form that they have into a generic representation. We talked about that a little bit earlier in chapters two and three. Questions from very different domain situations can map to the same abstract tests. For example, browsing and search, uh, they certainly map to the same level. And we talked about that with uh, the uh, disease specialist and the uh, clinical uh, lab person. They had really essentially the same task, although they were in different domains. And uh, at this level, we can design task blocks and abstract blocks. So here's an example where it didn't work so well. And a lot of early web visualization uh, papers posited that uh, solving loss in hyperspace problem can be solved via visualization uh, of the internet structure. And this was precisely an attempt to do that with a uh, 3D tree. Um, it didn't work uh, as a visualization to explain the problem and the resulting uh, visualization tools, as you can see here, uh, incurred additional cognitive load for the user rather than uh, reducing it. Next level is the visual encoding and interaction idioms. And this level you decide on a specific way to create and manipulate the visual representation of the abstract data block that you choose in the previous level. 
each possible approach is called an idiom and idioms are really important in the uh, book. They're uh, different approaches to producing a visualization and we design idiom blocks. Uh, it's common to have uh, multiple ones that are working at the same time, but uh, some tools are narrow in scope. Here's an example of an idiom. This is a word tree um, that uh, allows you to explore the word blind in more depth. So, you know, um, here, you know, if uh, love be blind. So if we click on blind, it says, okay, interpretation might be love cannot hit the mark or at best degrees with night. Um, and then uh, blind, um, if we control click on it in the original, we can um, basically get even uh, more detail on it. And then at the algorithm level, uh, we want to uh, create algorithms to carry out the design goals. Computer science students are very familiar with this level. Uh, examples that we might have in visualization or volume rendering, ray casting, or texture mapping. And how do you do things? Uh, well, you can do them top down or bottom up, and you've probably heard these terms before. Uh, problem driven design is the top down approach. We start with the problem domain, proceed to the sub problems, and we can often find existing solutions at that top level, and that can drive our design process. Technique driven, we have a tool or we have a specific new idea or algorithm. And then we um, work from the bottom up to find how this tool can actually fit the problem that we're working with or find a domain where it actually fits. And you know, sometimes you see this um, and someone will design a tool and we don't quite have a use for it yet, but we can um, figure out where this might fit. And both of these use the what, why, and how framework. <coughs> So uh, threats to uh, validation or, you know, are we building the uh, right product? Uh, and, you know, there are reasons why we might have made the wrong choices uh, going through this uh, process. One, we got the wrong problem. We misunderstood the needs of the user. Uh, wrong abstraction. We might be showing them the wrong thing. Or the incorrect idiom, uh, the way we're showing it might not work. And then the uh, wrong algorithm, you know, the code may be too slow or it may require uh, you know, a lot of memory. We're getting a lot of experience with that in our tools that we're using for this uh, visualization class. So uh, you can certainly see that some of the tools that we've used uh, may not work on all uh, platforms. So again, as a summary, uh, we have the uh, different levels um, and we look at the uh, threats at those different levels. So at the algorithmic level, uh, we might have a slow algorithm uh, to uh, validate it. We can uh, analyze the computational complexity to make sure that it's uh, not a slow algorithm and we can validate it uh, further by measuring the system time and memory. At the um, visual encoding or interaction idiom, which is the uh, green level here, you know, we might have an ineffective uh, encoding or interaction idiom. Uh, we can justify that. Uh, we can also do uh, tests on users or an informal usability study, or even go as far as a uh, you know controlled lab study to measure human time and errors on tasks. Uh, another threat uh, that occurs at the data or task abstraction level in the uh, yellow is uh, wrong data or task abstraction. And there we can test on target users, collect anecdotal evidence of utility. Uh, do field studies, document their usage of the uh, system. And, you know, again, we at the uh, top level, the domain situation, we may have gotten the wrong problem. So, you know, before we, you know, proceed, observe and interview target users. And after we have the uh, system, you know, we can validate by observing the overall adoption rates. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you for listening.